Hi, welcome to another December Extra video for 90% Knitting. I'm Lisa, also known as Fiber Nymph, and as promised, I'm doing another December Extra. I just recorded episode 266 in two parts yesterday, so this is a lot of recording in a very short period of time, but you know, you can just space them out and watch them as you have time to, or if you are inclined to watch them. Um, I thought I would try another new location here today. We're in our living room, um, which I've, I've recorded over there at our dining room table before. It's one big open room, our living room, dining room, kitchen, um, and then like the stairs behind you <laughs> that go down to the basement. And it's very, it's vaulted. Um, it's a log home. I've mentioned that before. But anyway, um, I, I apologize if it's a tiny bit echoey. Um, the last time it didn't seem quite as bad to me once I listened to it as it sounds when I'm talking now. Um, but hopefully that won't be bothersome. I also have a little bit of Christmas music on. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it or not. It's just sort of in the background. I've had it on all day. It's um, Ashley Davis, the Christmas sessions. Ashley Davis with John Doyle. We just picked the CD up the other night. We had one of our folk music concerts and she was the guest singer with the group that we were seeing, which was Lunasa. Um, but anyway, she had these two, um, this, both CDs was kind of put together in a little set. And so it was the Christmas sessions. And then she had this one, which is Songs of the Celtic Winter, which, oh my goodness, I love this CD. It's like, it's like holiday songs, except they're ones you can listen to all winter long. They're not really Christmas specific. Um, they're just a celebration of the winter season, which I have wanted a CD like that for a really long time. Plus they are Celtic in nature and I love Celtic music. Um, this Christmas sessions one isn't so much Celtic, but she does have a beautiful voice. And anyway, so, you know, <laughs> Ashley Davis, if you're looking for some new Christmas music or holiday winter music in your life, um, that's really neither here nor there for what I'm going to talk to you about today, but I thought I'd mention it. I do have a Christmas mug too. Okay, now I want you to look at this mug. Does that look like a Christmas mug to you? I bought this mug for my husband last Christmas season. And then, you know, after partway into January, I always put the Christmas mugs away and get our regular mugs back out. And then, you know, after, around Thanksgiving, after right after Thanksgiving, I get the Christmas mugs out again. So this has been put away all year. And so I got it out with all the other Christmas mugs about a week or two ago, I guess. And we've been using all of them, but he hadn't used this one yet. And I said, hey, you haven't used your Christmas cat mug that I got you last year. And he said, oh, I didn't know that was a Christmas mug. I'm like, <laughs> really? He said, well, I just thought it was a cat in a sweater. <laughs> Which, it's not even in a sweater, he's in a scarf. But I'm like, that is so a Christmas mug. So I'm enjoying some tea out of the Christmas mug. It's cute because his little face is on the inside too. The cat, not my husband's face. Um, the tea is really yummy. I picked this up at the store earlier, well, I guess late last week. Um, it's Bigelow Ginger Snappish. I'd never seen it before. They had a few different flavors of like holiday flavored teas. Um, and this was one of them. The other two didn't sound very good to me. One was eggnog and I don't know. But ginger, snappy ginger herb tea with lemon. And it's caffeine free. Um, it is, it has lemongrass, lemon peel, cinnamon, natural ginger, and lemon flavors with other natural flavors. Ginger, lemon, lemon verbena, rose hips, licorice root, and citric acid. So, and the citric acid is just a preservative, but it's super yummy. So I'm enjoying some tea and I am enjoying the fire um, and some music and a little bit of time with you guys. So um, we're supposed to get apparently a good whomping of snow tomorrow. I am so looking forward to that. I can't even begin to tell you. <laughs> But again, that has absolutely nothing to do with what I wanted to talk to you about today either. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, looking forward to next year. Um, it's that time of year and a lot of times I don't start really thinking about my plans for the coming year 
until sort of that week between Christmas and New Year's. But it's been on my mind a lot this year, um, just a little earlier. Um, I think partly because I've had, I still have so many loose ends going on in life right now um, that I'm really looking forward to 2018 being the year where a lot of those loose ends will finally get tied up and woven in um, and there won't be as many. So in that way, you know, I'm thinking about things from like, you know, the standpoint of my house and stuff that still needs to be done there and things that need to be done here. And, and then there's business things, which that's not going to be my focus for what I'm talking to you about today. Um, that's stuff that you'll see as it happens throughout the coming year in my business. Um, and things, of, of course, I'll tell you if they're applicable to you, like, you know, clubs and things like that. But um, this is actually more knitting focused. And what's really sort of funny about this is the fact that like I have never been someone who has really pre-planned my knitting. I mean, if I have a project that I have to get done for a certain event, like when I was knitting my wedding skirt, you know, obviously I had to get that done. So that was a plan. Or if I'm knitting specific items as gifts that have to be given at a certain time. Then there's some planning that goes into that. But otherwise, not really. I'm much more of a whim-driven knitter, <laughs> for better or worse. And um, I guess, you know, sometimes that works out really well because I my whims are usually the things that I want to knit. And so I'm, you know, I have the enticement to knit them and usually finish them if they're smaller projects. Other times, not so much. I have a whim and it's like, oh, I have to do this now. And I start it and then it kind of drifts off and you never see it again. Um, there are those projects in my life. And you know, it was funny, I was talking yesterday when I recorded the regular episode about how I have a lot of um, projects on the go now, which many of which I hope to finish by the end of December, which is why I'm not gonna do like a 2017 recap of my knitting year. Um, I'll do that in January probably. I usually do talk about that. Um, I'm, I'm doing things sort of backwards this year because usually I talk about that first, then I think about goals for the coming year. But I'm more focused on goals this year. So I also mentioned previously that we're going to do in, in the 90% knitting group, January is going to be a finish or frog it kind of month, um, probably fairly informally, but that's what I'm planning on focusing on. And I would totally invite you guys to come along with me on that. I think it's a really good month to do that. Um, just because you've gotten a lot of, you know, gift knitting out of the way in December. And so January, you can focus on the things that you want to knit. And if you're like me, you probably have things on the needles that you really liked and haven't had time to finish or on the wheel, or sewing projects, or what have you. So January for me is going to be finish or frog it. Um, I'm hoping to carry that theme kind of through the rest of my year too, and um, expand it to be not just about whips, but also about things that maybe I've already knit um, or created, and maybe they're not seeing much use or much love for one reason or another. Um, and for those items, I want to also consider, do they need to be fixed so that I can use them and they're, they're better? Or do I need to just flip them in some way and either repurpose them as something else or not necessarily rip them out, but you know, can I use them in some other way? Um, I'm, I'm thinking specifically for me, I have a whole box and actually two, I have a box and a bag of socks that I've knit over the years that have holes in them. They're kind of beyond being darned. I don't really enjoy darning socks, but I'm I'm loath to just get rid of them because I did put time and energy and effort and, and resources into those socks. So I have ideas for how I'd like to repurpose my holy socks. <laughs> so things like that. Or, you know, can I flip things and just like give them to somebody else who can use them? Um, I guess a lot of that is kind of coming out of the fact that again I'm you know in the coming year I'm hoping to sell my house I still have a lot of things 
that need to come up here, and I don't want to bring things here that aren't going to have any value or aren't going to get any use. So I'm trying to think really critically and be mindful about what I bring along um, and if it's going to be able to be used or if it's just going to be sitting here in a pile instead of back at my house in a pile. So that's sort of where a lot of this is coming from um, as far as that. Hey, Winnie. This is the other danger of recording out here. This is like open cat central. And I'm hoping she does not decide to try to jump on what I have my computer on because it's not sitting overly stably. Um, you know, the other thing I noticed is the camera is sort of making our mantle look like it has a bow in it. And it totally doesn't. It's absolutely flat. But I think that's just sort of um, an artifact of the camera lens that's sort of distorting it. So if that's, if you're noticing that, trust me, our mantle is straight. Okay, anyway, so that's part of what I'm looking forward to for next year with my knitting is, you know, deciding things that are on the needles. Am I going to finish them? Am I going to frog them? Things that have already finished, do I need to fix them so I can use them better? Like my, um, 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 my, my, Lopi. It is made out of Lopi, but my um, hero, my hero cardigan, it's not quite a finished object yet, but I do have to fix it before it can be. So, you know, that I'm definitely going to do. Um, yeah, so that's part of what is coming in the coming year for me. And I would love it if you guys would also come on because that would be an excellent thing we could talk about in the thread and keep that chatter going that we've had all this year. The other thing is I recently purchased a lot of patterns and I did mention this on the podcast um, that during the sale that was going on in associate in conjunction with um, the gift along the 2017 gift along that I did buy a lot of patterns in one fell swoop, which I don't usually do. But I kind of got caught up in it and it was fun and there were so many that were just beautiful. And so after having done that, <laughs> I thought, okay, oops, sorry, I just bought my computer. Uh, after having done that, I decided I really need to have a plan so that I had not just spent a lot of money on patterns for no reason. Winnie's trying to get in the porch room out there. If you saw, I, I did a little um, Instagram story this morning. I did several little clips, and one of them was about her. She takes every chance she can to get that door open over there to the porch room. If there's even just a little crack, she will just play with it until she gets it open. It's amazing. Sorry, I know. I'm a squirrel. <laughs> Cat, actually. Anyway, back to the patterns. Um, ordinarily, when I buy patterns, I don't usually show them to you unless I'm casting them on or I'm planning to cast them on um, because I feel like it's maybe sort of a waste of time. Maybe you're not interested. But I have decided to change that up, switch that up a little bit in this case because um, a couple of reasons. Number one, I'm going to show you these patterns that I have all in a folder ready for next year and I'm going to try to work through as many of them as I can. Now I'm not going to exclusively knit on these patterns but these are ones that I would really like to draw from. Um, and number two I thought it might be nice for you to see what I'm hoping to work on and maybe some of these would be of interest to you. Um, if there's enough interest maybe we could work on them together you know again informally but it's sometimes it's fun to sort of just have a project that multiple people are knitting on at the same time so anyway basically what the rest of this video is going to be is me showing you a whole lot of patterns and i'm going to as i go i'll tell you what appealed to me about them and if i have any specific plans about them um and if you're not interested in that that's perfectly fine i'll catch you next time but i'm excited so let's get started. I'm going to go through these patterns. I sort of have them organized in types of project, uh, by types of project. Um, a lot of them in all of the categories are color work. <laughs> 2018 may very well be the year of color work for me because I am I'm just so excited about color work right now and enthused and I really want to do more and more of it and I want to get better at it. You know, that is my biggest thing. I just really want to get better at it. So the first selection of patterns that I have to show you, um, I think a couple of them I did show you because I bought yarn for them when I um, made a purchase from the Wooly Thistle recently. But I'm going to just go through them all again. 
And I can tell you that a lot of these color work mitt patterns that I'm going to show you are ones that I'm hoping to work on throughout the year next year um, with the purpose of them being for Christmas gifts for some friends of mine. So if I work on them through the year, by December they should be done. <laughs> Sort of an informal goal through all of this is gift knitting for next Christmas. I would love to have done before December 1st. I've never done that before, but I love that idea. And I think I've mentioned Sarah Pomegranate from the Yarns at Yinhu podcast. She does that. She's done that the past several years. Um, and so she then spends December working on the things she wants to work on. Um, her own gift knitting, like things that have been gifted to her, patterns and yarn and such. And I just think that's a fabulous idea. So that's sort of a background goal for me. Anyway, here are the color work mitts that I'm really hoping to work on this coming year. Um, the first set is the Yidrasil mitts. I know I'm pronouncing it wrong, but they're super pretty. A lot of people have been working on these. You've probably seen them on other podcasts. Um, the pattern is by Skein Deer Knits, and this is a horrible picture because my printer was running out of ink whenever I printed it out. But I just really love this tree motif on it, and I love it in those colors. And I may very well knit mine in these similar colors. I have a lot of um, Jameson and Smith two ply, four ply, I can't remember now, um, the fingering weight yarn that I would like to work on these mitts with. So that's one. Now the next several are all from the same designer. And um, these are ones that I did buy during the gift along sale. And that is Erica Hauser, Huser. Um, her patterns are just phenomenal and they're beautiful and I can't wait to try them. Um, the first one is the underwing mitt pattern. And I do have yarn for this. Again, I purchased, um, uh, it was the um, Tuku wool. Um, that I purchased. the blue, I did purchase blue. I'm not sure. I purchased a dark blue and a light blue. The more I think about it, I think I'll use the dark blue and then I'll just use some light um, Jameson and Smith that I have. And then I don't know what color I'll use for that little duplicate stitch um, orange there that are on those under, mitt, uh, under wings. But I'll, I'll do something. So anyway. Erica Hauser, those are the underwing mitts. Also from Erica are the Illumin mitts. Aren't they pretty? I love that gradient yarn she used. I do not have any yarn specifically picked out. Actually, it's not gradient, that is color work on the cuff too. It's like a, a pixel kind of design. Um, I don't have yarn picked out for these, but I've got plenty to choose from. Um, that actually, might I might do those with hand spun, so. Um, next up, also from her, are the songbird mittens. Aren't they beautiful? Oh my goodness. I just love that bird motif in there. And this actually might be a good mitten to use the lighter blue with. I'll have to think about that. Then there are the Wayfarer mittens, also by Erica. Just love that motif. It reminds me of the desert. And actually, she said it's inspired by the beauty of the canyons in the Western US, and that's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> um, and then there's these. These are so pretty. The Wishmaker mitts. Aren't those lovely? Okay, so those are all the ones from Erica Hauser. Um, again, I have yarn picked for one or two of them, but you know, my yarn choices will come as I, I decide to work on them. Those are the ones that I would really, really like to be making though as gifts for friends next year. Another color work mitt pattern um, that I got during the sale was the Sweet Paprika Designs Portraiture Mitts, which I think that is very pretty. That's sort of a, a more traditional Fair Isle kind of pattern. And I, I just like the design. So, and those are designed by Elizabeth Sullivan. So I guess she is Sweet Paprika Designs. And then I've got a couple pair of mitts here that are not color work, but I thought they were really pretty, and so I purchased them. Um, these are a DK weight mitt uh, called Porto. 
which now that I'm thinking about it, I probably should have made these instead of those ones that I showed on my podcast yesterday <laughs> that I was having issues with, the sweet fern mitts, but I still like those. So anyway, these I think would be just a nice, probably a quicker gift knit if I needed something like that. And then these I think I'm going to make for myself. Um, the Regina Marie Mitts by Sarah Huntington. Oh, did I tell you who the Pip and Pin ones are from? Porta Pip and Pin. It just says Pip and Pin. It doesn't actually have a person's name. So I don't know who Pip and Pin is as far as a person, a designer, but okay. The Regina Marie Mitts is designed by, are designed by Sarah Huntington. Hey, Polly. It's another kitty. Um, Sarah Huntington Birch, and they're a lovely cable and lace design. I think they're super pretty. So, and again, these I may end up doing out of some sort of hand spun. That's another goal. It's kind of a goal I always have those to try to knit more with my hand spun. Oh, I also have this pair of mitts, um, which I had purchased this a while ago and then um, didn't make them. Um, Shop, Shop Hop 2013. I don't know what that means. I guess it was a, a shop hop somewhere. The mitts are called A River Runs Through Them. A River Runs Through Mitt by Amy Pelletier. Um, and they just have that really cool water design to them, which I thought was really pretty. So those could be for me, or they could be a gift. I don't know. Um, but they are made out of worsted weight. So they would be a good gift knit also. Okay, so those, I believe are all of the mitts. Actually, there's one other pair, but it's associated with something else, so I'm not gonna show you that quite yet. Um, but going back to Erica Hauser, she also has this hat pattern out called the Passerine hat, which is another bird motif color work. I just, again, beautiful. And you know, to do those bird mittens and the hat would be a lovely set for somebody. We'll see if I like anybody well enough to do this. <laughs> Okay, so now moving into some shawls, but also still color work. Um, this is, okay, it's from 10 hours or less patterns, and I can't remember if I bought this during the sale or not, um, but the pattern is called Ancient Artifact. Isn't that pretty? I love that color work motif in there. So again, color work seems to be my thing right now. And then there's this, there's the Winter Companion Cowl, which I love cowls. This is a really long cowl. And I, I both like the color work that's in it and the way it's styled, because it looks like you can do a lot with it. Um, custom designs by Galzan Knits. So here's what it looks like. I think it's really fascinating because it's got color work mixed in there with garter. I just like the different ways it can be worn. Um, yeah, it's just, it's super pretty. I have not actually read through any of these patterns, so that's a whole other ball game. Oh, okay. This scarf, this is the one I think I might have alluded to in the podcast. Um, you know, brioche has been such a big thing lately, and it's something that I've just sort of steered clear of. I haven't had a real desire to learn how to do brioche. I've only ever knit one brioche item, and it was a single color brioche. It turned out horribly, <laughs> and that was more operator error than anything else. But two color brioche, I think, looks really, really pretty. I have just never gone down that rabbit hole. But I saw this particular scarf pattern, and I don't even remember where I saw it recently, but I saw it and I thought, oh my gosh, that is so pretty. And it's something that you can do with a lot of scraps, and I have tons of scrap yarn, far more than I will ever use in all of my scrap blankets that I have started. Um, it's called the Adaluma Scarf. I just think that is so pretty. And I think it would be a really fun way to learn to color brioche. Um, so I have that printed out. I don't know who the off, um, oh, Shara Maid. 
it says copyright 2017 share made so anyway so that is a scarf i may attack or attack i may attempt if i finally decide i want to go down that um rabbit hole of brioche so we'll see okay here's the other pattern that includes like mitts gauntlet kind of thing and this is one that i purchased a while back actually not recently um, but it's called miss rachel's yoke and gauntlets and this is a kate davies design and it's the sweater and the gauntlets which go together the color work is the same design I think they're both pretty and, you know, I'm all about the mitts. I'm really all about the color work sweaters too. I have a bunch that will be coming up here in a moment to show you. <laughs> so I don't know if I will actually attempt this sweater. It looks really, really intricate to me. I may start out with some, a little bit simpler ones because so far that uh, Hero Cardigan is the only color work sweater I've ever done. And that was heavier weight yarn, and I'm pretty sure this is probably out of a fingering weight. I'm not a big fan of the idea of trying to knit myself a sweater out of fingering weight because I'm a bigger girl, and that's a lot of yarn. Um, but yeah, this is out of, I'm pretty sure it's out of fingering weight. Anyway, whatever. It's pretty, and I have it in this collection of possibilities for next year. Okay, moving forward with other sweaters that are a lot of color work. Um, this design is by Lisa Ross, and it is called Frosted, and I thought that was super pretty, too. I just love the clean simplicity of that design. The snowflakes are so pretty, and it doesn't look overly busy, even though it is a lot of color work. Um, but it looks pretty doable, I think. There's not a lot of long floats, it doesn't look like, so that would be a good thing to do. So I'm really... I'm happy about that one. I think I may, that, well, I don't want to say it might be one next on my needles because I'm not, I'm not to that point yet, but um, yeah, that's a really pretty sweater. Okay, then um, I have a few sweaters here that are actually in magazines that I already own, and that's another thing. I love being able to knit projects that are in publications that I already own, so I'm not actually buying more, you know, more patterns and more books and things. Um, this is the Feather and Fern sweater by Jennifer Steingass, which this was in the um, By Hand magazine, the Puget Sound edition, which I believe was the last one that came out. I think a new one's coming out soon, but I do own that, and I think that's such a pretty sweater. And Maria from the Ninja Ticket Chickens podcast has made this sweater, and she wears it a lot in her podcast, and I think it's so pretty. So that's one. I just printed the picture out so that I could have it in my folder so it would re remain in my memory here that I have it and want to make it. Um, next up is another one like that. It's uh, the Birkin sweater, the Birkin pullover by Caitlin Hunter, which a lot of people have been knitting this, and it's in lane number two. So I love that one. And then there's the branches and buds pullover, which I cannot remember what the original, I think it might've been in a making magazine, which I don't have one that it was in. If, I, I could be wrong, but I think that's what it was in. But I did purchase the pattern um, and it's the branches and buds pullover by Carrie Bostick Hogue. I just love the simplicity of some of these patterns, you know, as opposed to that Kate Davies pattern, which is very pretty, but there's so much more going on in that. I like these like two color um, yokes. I think they're just very pretty. Um, then there is the Arbe Arboreal Pullover, um, also by Jennifer Steingass, which I have in my library on Ravelry. And then I have a couple sweaters that are not really color work. Oops, okay. Um, this is another Lisa Ross sweater and it's called Palette. I like this one because I love the idea of working with a gradient in a sweater like that. So that's a possibility. I have another sweater in here, I don't, oh here it is. Um, this is totally a diversion from anything I just showed you because it is not color work at all. 
and it is uh, a lot of lace and I, I well let's see I did the February lady sweater one time and then I lost a ton of weight and couldn't wear it because it was super huge on me um but I think that might be like the only really lacy sweater I've ever made for myself um but this is at least made out of like a light worsted weight yarn so that wouldn't be too bad it's not a fingering weight it's called avix um, from the knitting vortex by jennifer desau i i just think it's super pretty this is the only page i printed out from it the sweater patterns i usually don't print out the entire pattern because they're usually quite long i just print out um the picture page and then the page that says how much yarn and like the supplies that you need so i have that handy so yeah I just that's very pretty um, again it's a total diversion from any of these other patterns that I've been looking at but it appealed to me so I have it okay and then moving into just some other odds and ends here I think at the end I can't remember um, this is actually another cowl and it's called beloved Berlin by Isabel Kramer this isn't the best picture of it um, but there's a whole lot of color work going on in there, or multiple colors. I don't know that it's per se color work, but it uses a lot of different colors in it. I think three, but the way it's worked up, let me see if there's a better picture of it. It's sort of like one side looks one way and one side looks the other way, which is, you're just not seeing that super well in that picture. And I can't really show you these two pictures. Go to the project page and you'll see them. Um, I can't show you the other pictures because the pattern is on those pages as well and I don't want to share that. But basically, you know, the one side of the cow is this textured um, side in that color and then the inside is this striped side. I just think it's really very pretty and it would be very warm being a double-sided cow like that. So that's a possibility. Okay, now we're going to go into some odd things because these are things I hardly ever knit. And the first couple are stuffies. <laughs> I, I printed this out. I bought this during the sale. Eddie Lizard. <laughs> I just think he's so cute. And I was going to make him for my husband. I thought I might make him for Christmas, but I haven't done that yet. I probably still could because I don't think he's, you know, he only uses 40 yards of yarn for the body. So it's obviously not a huge project. I just, fiddly things are not my thing, but I just thought he was really cute. And here's another one, Wasabi, which I printed out in black and white um, by Susan Claudino. Let's see, who is... Eddie Lizard is by Dominitrix. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Um, but Susan Claudino has this one, which is a whale called Wasabi. <laughs> I just thought he was so cute. So I may make those. Okay. Then this one is actually a big bulky shawl that I have the pattern for. It's been in my library probably since last year around this time because it was part of the Shawl Society by um, Helen Stewart. And um, I don't really need a lot of shawls at this point. I know there were a couple in there, but I have a lot of shawls and I've got a ton of shawls and shawl patterns in my Ravelry library that I would love to make someday. But they're just not top priorities because I have so many shawls right now and I really would like to work on sweaters and those gift knits, the mitts. So that's sort of, I'm prioritizing. But anyway, this is the Sonder shawl by Helen Stewart. And it's a long triangular shaped shawl and it's got those three tassels on the three corners. <laughs> I just think it's adorable. I don't know that I would use bulky yarn to make it though. I would probably do it maybe out of a worsted instead. Um, but it's just, it's super cute. So that's one. And then let's see, do I have anything else in here? Oh, this is also, this was out of, um, uh, the knit vent 2016 knit vent pattern collection from Helen Stewart or the Helen Stewart, I think put together. I don't know. Um, but this one's by Renee Callahan and Renee actually has a podcast, East London knits or, <sighs> I know I'm, I'm saying that wrong, but I love her podcast. She interviews a lot of really interesting people, but she has some patterns out. And this is the Boreal Forest hat. There's also a Boreal Forest cowl in this collection, but I just really like that hat. So, 
so that's a possibility. Again, color work. And lastly, this is the last one in all of these that I'm going to show you that I do not actually own a pattern. It is in my Ravelry queue. Um, I've not purchased the pattern yet, but actually looking at the this is one of those patterns that like if you look at it on the pattern page it just never really did anything for me like it's okay it's interesting but it's like i wouldn't have said "Ooh, i had to knit that but when i was at indie knit and spin back in november a customer came into the booth wearing this and it was beautiful it was just stunning and she told me what it was and i'm like really um this is the om shawl om shawl by andrea mowry and you can wear it a lot of different ways. I mean, it's sort of a big shawl, but like there's buttons and buttonholes. So you can kind of wear it like a poncho. And that's actually how this woman who had come into the booth was wearing it as a poncho. And I really would like to make a poncho. <laughs> so that's why this is in this collection. So I may at some point decide to do this. I don't know. Um, again, I don't have the pattern for it. So it's not a super high priority. Um, I want to do ones that I already have patterns for, but I just, I think it's pretty. So yeah, the Om Shaw. So that is it as far as my big folder of patterns that I have right now that I would like to work on in the coming year. Again, I, I have no desire to say I'm going to knit every single one of those patterns because that's not it, but I want to draw from those for a lot of my projects in the coming year. Um, a couple of other things that I would really like to work on. Well, I already said I want to be knitting on gifts throughout the entire year. But I think the other thing I want to do in the coming year, and I'm not even sure where this came from, this idea. I know, um, what's her name? Amy from the Stranded Podcast has been doing this. She's been knitting herself Christmas socks all year. And I don't really have any Christmas socks. I mean, I... I have that one pair that I just cast on, but I don't really have, do I have any? I think I have one pair that I did out of one of my own colorways, um, but that's it. And so, well, no, that's actually not true either. I have two, sorry. I have a Whoville, that I, Whoville socks that I knit out of a sock blank. So I have two pair of Christmas socks, um, but I think I would like to knit myself um, several pair of Christmas socks in the coming year. And here's my reasoning. I love knitting socks, but personally, I don't need a whole lot more socks in my sock drawer. I've got a ton of socks. Um, so just regular socks, I don't really need. I can knit socks as gifts for people, and I'm sure I will, but I want I would love to have more Christmas socks. So I don't I don't have any designs on trying to knit like a whole month's worth of Christmas socks or anything like that. But I think it would be fun to have like a dozen pairs of Christmas socks that I could wear throughout the month, you know, and into January through the Christmas season. I don't know. Not that I don't think I could wear them other times too, but I just think it would be super fun to have specific Christmas socks. So I might work on that. I do have a few skeins of Christmas specific yarn, and then I have all my own Christmas colorways. And I did just purchase another, I have another um, Christmas colorway on the way to me from another indie dyer. So I've got, you know, Christmas yarns that I could be working on things with. So we'll see. But that was an idea I had for the coming year, too. Again, I'm not really huge into making really solid carved in stone kind of plans for my knitting, just because as soon as I do that, I usually say, eh, and I lose interest, and then I go a totally different direction. But I guess, you know, it's just, again, it's my desire to want to make use of the resources that I already have, be it patterns or yarn. That's a whole other thing. I've got tons of yarn in there that I could pair up with a lot of these patterns. And again, that's not saying I'm not gonna buy yarn from other people or dye myself more yarn, because I know I will. But I just wanna, I wanna use what I have and enjoy it because that's been one of the real pluses of moving all of my yarn stash up here to the mountain house this year is it gave me the opportunity to touch all of my yarn and all of my spinning fiber. That's a whole other thing, things I want to spin in the coming year. Maybe I'll talk about that some other time. But yeah, I just, um, it was so much fun getting to actually touch each and every skein that I own. 
um, except some stuff that's in bins in deep stash, but um, I'll get to touch that eventually. <laughs> so I feel like I've really rambled about this, but it's so, again, it's just something I've been thinking about and I wanted to share with you guys. Cause again, if there's any of those patterns that I mentioned and I will make show notes for these and list all of these patterns and links with links to them in Ravelry so that you can check them out if you're interested. Um, anyway, if there are any that you think you might like to knit to, let me know and maybe we can knit together. That would be fun. Obviously, I can't knit all of them together with a bunch of different people, but you know, throughout the coming year, maybe we can focus on a certain pattern at a certain time. It would be fun for me. Hopefully, it would be fun for you. Anyway, that's it. I'm going to go. Um, my fire's dying down. I need to poke it a little bit. <laughs> and uh, it's about two o'clock in the afternoon and I am going to start this processing. And then I'm going to go over to the table over here and I'm going to start cutting out bags that I didn't get to start yesterday. Um, those Japanese knot bags that I'm doing for some Christmas gifts, that is next on the agenda today. So. I'm sure you'll see those in a future episode. But thanks for hanging out with me this afternoon. I hope you enjoyed seeing my pattern plans for the coming year. And maybe you got some ideas for things you might like to work on. Um, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.